Here at the site of the Francis Scott Key Bridge Collapse here in Baltimore, Maryland, the Unified Command finally got around to detonating the bridge truss that was lying there over the port side of the MV Dolly ship. We are going to examine this series of precise cutting detonations done by the Unified Command here, and we're going to compare it to their animation that they presented us with last week to see did this go as designed. So sometimes you might design how you want to have your charges and put them in place, but sometimes things might not always go as planned. So we're going to see how well did it go according to their plans. A demolition team in Australia have demonstrated how not to implode a building. 100 kilograms of explosives made a big bang, but as the 4,000-ton silo in Red Bank began to collapse, it got stuck. So let's see what their plans were and analyze three camera angles. To refloat the motor vessel dally, the section of the steel structure that's draped over it and pinning it down must be removed. So to accomplish this, precision cutting offers one of the most efficient and safest methods available to remove the steel under such a high level of tension. The highly controlled process enables surgical precision here, and it consists of four steps basically. So the first one is salvage and demolition. And the teams have analyzed the structure to determine precise locations where the charges can be placed. So secondly, they'll come in here and they'll cut the steel at the identified locations like you see here. And the charges will be placed within these cuts and encased with a wrap to a large piece of tape. Then they'll blow the charges and the steel will be separated like you see right here boom and then they all fall apart and go into the water and hopefully it will get pushed away from the dolly if all of their calculations are correct so first thing bright and early on friday morning man this was on may 10th at about 8 15 in the morning just c1000 picked up a huge section of that bridge truss that was on the starboard side of the dolly and proceeded to carry it over towards sparrow point you can see how really choppy the water is because it was windy and things were not looking good at all for a Saturday afternoon blasting of that bridge off the dolly bow. Next to it here, you can see, if you look over and look at these uh, four pillars, this whole bridge pier is a duplicate of the one that was next to the dolly that is all shattered into pieces now. But this shows you just how big those concrete pillars are, just like the one you see laying across the top of the, the starboard side of the bow of the dolly and made a smaller gouge in there but there it goes off to sparrows point and since the mission to blast the bridge truss was moved from saturday until sunday they were busy saturday removing bridge trusses so you can see one here a smaller one uh, being carried out by one of the smaller cranes so you can see no downtime was wasted at all while they were waiting also Saturday from Captain Andy's Menorcan Mullet's 4K camera that he had set up. You can see they twisted off a section there of this other bridge truss a few hundred yards to the north of the dolly where it's parked. And they're just taking this thing apart. They've been working on this piece here for the last few days, taking small sections off it and then carting it away. And they're gently setting it down there on the barge. Now as they lower this piece, take a look at how small the workers are there compared to that piece. So this piece is not quite as small as you might think. This probably looks like it's 30 or 40 feet long when you compare it side by side with the salvers that are working underneath it. So I'll put a link down in the video description below for you. Captain Andy lets us use some of his videos and he has great 4K close-up videos covering everything that's going on there at the site of the Francis Scott Key Bridge Collapse. And Captain Andy also runs these live streams on his channel, too, on the Menorcan Mullet, where for about two-hour blocks of time, they'll show you different things going on around there as the salvagers recover many parts of the debris from the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse. So make sure you go check out his channel and check out this gem that he captured yesterday. What a scene. Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse site where the dolly is still sitting we caught this on our camera today during our live stream. Yeah, that's a kayak. There well he is right there. The 2,000 yard safety zone that's been established. Oh, I don't know. Here come since the, the morning of the incident. 
with the United States Coast Guard. Here comes the Coast Guard. And I would have loved to have been a fly on the gunnel to hear this conversation and to have understood just what this guy was thinking. Well, it looks like they have gotten the kayaker pointed in the right direction, given him some useful information, and sent him on his way. Of course, my question is, is how in the world did this guy get past all of the security boats that were there? And also, I'm thinking, why wouldn't they have just taken him in his kayak and put him on their little boat and take him back to where he comes from or arrest him? I thought it, this was an arrestable offense. So apparently they're showing quite a bit of leeway with this guy, unless there's going to be 100 cops waiting for him when he gets over there. Who knows? Okay, so let's examine the detonation from the Streamtime live cam that was set up a couple of miles away looking towards the bow. So there's your explosion. Look how far all the shrapnel went way off in the distance. Now there goes your truss off to the right and it falls down into the water. However, I don't think it ended up away from the dally, which I believe was their original plan. So let's take a look. I slowed it down 4x for you. So there's the blast. Now watch carefully the left edge of the truss and watch as it swings downward to the right and it looks to me like it's not detaching at the bottom of it on the left hand side right where that mooring line attaches to the bow of the ship so you can see it's just spinning down and down and down and dropping but it's not sliding off of the bow now the water is going to obscure it momentarily so there's the explosion now watch this point right there See how it stays attached, almost attached to the roadway. Now I think it finally popped off, but it should have sheared off, not just waited to the last minute and popped off. So I think that delayed every, everything. And so I think that's what caused the truss to somersault off the bow of the dolly rather than kind of slide downwards at an angle into the water. So now it's leaning up against the dolly, which is not what we want. Here's the view from Captain Andy's Menorcan Mullet Channel, about two miles away. Boom. Look at all the shrapnel spreading out, almost 900 feet away. And look how the truss just somersaulted rather than slide into the water. And there's the audio of the boom. And it's delayed because it's about two miles away. Get ready for some reverb. Oh yeah, that was loud. So as you can see, as the smoke clears, it appears that the bridge truss actually somersaulted up and over the edge of the bow, and it did not slide off the edge of the bow into the water as had they had intended. Remember, the Unified Command had stated last week that they were going to blow all of the little pieces together, and they would slide off into the water. So when you look here, you can see they were still left with this big section of truss here sitting on top of the dally. That's probably manageable. They could probably pluck that up with a crane and rig it up and get it out of there. And then this section here that's draped over the side is a piece of cake, I think, for them. They should still be able to remove this section of bridge truss off the port side of the dolly by simply removing it like they did on the starboard side last week with the other section that was there. Here's the view that the Associated Press had from Fort Arm. See, so that really wasn't too bad. Um, if I was on the crew of the dolly, which they were sheltered in place, I would want to be on the bridge, man, hidden down there below the windows and then stick my phone up, up over the window there just to capture the explosions. So this should sort of dispel some of those conspiracy theory people that always like to come out whenever there's a big collapse like this. And many of them hit all of our videos here saying that the night of the original collapse, that it wasn't caused by the bridge, that it was a detonation, which is just unbelievably stupid. Because did you hear how loud that noise was? The amount of energy that it takes to drop a bridge makes such a loud noise that it was so unbelievably loud two miles away that you can bet that night people five miles away would have heard it and they would have been waking up just like with the Champlain Towers. There weren't any 911 calls for Champlain Towers collapsing They for like loud, super loud explosions or anything from people blocks away. There was just the only people that reported it were the people that were inside the building and then the building next door, people said that they saw something falling.
Now, take a look at these incredible photographs that were taken this week by Dead Rise Marine Photography. That's Mark Hergen. He is an avid captain and photographer, and he has graciously allowed me to show you some of these photos here. And I'll give you a link to his Facebook page down the video description below, so make sure you go check out his Facebook page. He has some really, really incredible pictures. He takes better pictures than even the Army Corps of Engineers people do. That shows like the men in the, with the telephoto lens. And by the way, check out the size of that chain and those cables that they used to rig up the brig trusses that were removed from the dolly. You see that depth of field there? We call that bokeh. And that is where the subject stands out in focus while the background is completely blurred out and you'll definitely see that a lot with professional photographers and i try to accomplish that a lot with some of my smaller lenses they're very expensive lenses to get a very low aperture like about a 1.4 or 1.8 but i use them on some of my extreme close-ups on my diy videos to show you just the subject in focus and everything out is out of focus and it makes it look really cool effect now, the Allied Command released these photos for us here over the weekend. As you look at the port side of the Dolly Bow there, do you see something missing there? If you remember last week, I showed you, I remember they had that whole pillar there from the bridge pier was leaning up against the ship, and then they sliced it, most likely with one of those diamond cable cutters, and um, sort of left it dangling there. You can see it there. But now, coming back to the picture, you can see it's all gone. They cleared it up this week. And, of course, the crews spent much of Saturday wiring up all of the charges. Now, I don't know if they're wired together or if they're each wired separately and done through just a wireless remote. So after the Chesapeake 1000 crane removed that last giant chunk of bridge truss off the starboard bow of the dally, this is what was left of it sticking up out of the water. And they were going like gangbusters over the weekend. These guys all on the man lifts there going around the different parts of the trusses, adding more of the detonation charges. And they started wiring them up on Sunday. That's when I saw them doing it. But you can see why they didn't get to this in time. They didn't have enough time to get to it on Friday due to the weather. So they had to postpone everything. And then the same thing happened on Saturday as well. And then on Sunday, rain came in and it got really foggy for a while there. So rewinding things of about a month and a half or so, if you remember back on March 29th, three days after, that's what it looked like. And then look, by April 4th, uh, you can see the whole channel was still blocked. But then by April 24th, they had that channel nicely cleared out on the right side, and they opened up that limited access side of the channel, which they then closed on April 29th again. But look at March 26th, and compared to how things looked over there on the northern side of the collapse. And there it is again on March 29th. You can see that whole truss there. And then there it is on March 30th. They had some of that span. They're all lined up with the barges and they had it all cut off and removed. They started working again on the area over on the starboard side of the dolly. Started to remove small sections of that truss as well carting them off a little bit at a time, as much as they could take. They would put them on the barges and then just take them over to Sparrows Point, removed on April 6th. And look at this, by April 15th, they had uh, the new section here just about ready to be transverse with boat traffic. And then again, you know, look back on March 29th and then to April 14th. In just uh, those two weeks time there, they brought in the Chessie, and Chessie was bringing in this massive pieces, just carrying them over to Sparrows Point. So it really didn't take that long. And then they showed us some updated sonar that, that showed that by April 18th, how much they'd cleared off the bottom there. And then just look, look at this wrapped mess that was all the way around the bridge pier there. And they were able to get that all out on April 22nd there. And this was like the last big piece that was blocking that channel. And once they cleared it, you can see they brought in the Balsa 94 was the first ship to exit out. And then came the Carmen right after it. So things started to very rapidly happen. Now, one thing I wanted to remind you of, you know, here on this channel, we do a lot of engineering disasters and remodeling projects. So I want you to take a look at this video up here next. And this is a massive 
kitchen cabinet installation I did with double decker cabinets on the top. Very, very difficult. And also a 45 degree mounted refrigerator in the corner. You definitely got to check that video out. And when you're done with that one, make sure you check out this other video over here too on how to laminate your floors. So thank you so much for joining us and we'll see all of you on the next one.